You are just, O Lord, and your judgment is right. Treat your servant in accord with your merciful love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome to our Mass today, all those of you joining us in church and those joining us online. We begin Mass as we always do, acknowledging that wherever we are, we're all part of that great family of God. And so I invite our Lord into the heart of our being to make us one in his name and to heal whatever's false within us. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Now let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord was addressed to me as follows. Son of man, I have appointed you as a sentry to the house of Israel. When you hear word from my mouth, warn them in my name. If I say to a wicked man, wicked wench, you are to die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked man to renounce his ways, then he shall die for his sin, but I will hold you responsible for his death. If, however, you do warn a wicked man to renounce his ways and repent, and he does not repent, then he shall die for his sin, but yourself will, be sa but yourself will have saved your life. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice, harden not your hearts. Or oh, that today you would listen to his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, ring out our joy to the Lord. Hail the rock who saves us. Let us come before us giving thanks. With songs let us hail the Lord. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice, harden not your hearts. Come in, let us bow and bend low. Let us kneel before the God who made us, for he is our God, and we the people who belong to his pasture, the flock that is led by his hand. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice, harden not your hearts. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice, harden your, not your hearts as at Mirab and at, on that day at Masab in the desert, 
when your father put me to the test, when they tried me, though they saw my work. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice, harden not your hearts. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Avoid getting, getting into debt, accept the debt of mutual love. If you love your fellow man, you have carried out your obligations, all the commandments. You shall not commit adultery, you shall not kill, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and so on, are summed up in this single command. You must love your neighbour as yourself. Love is the one thing that cannot hurt your neighbour. That is why it is the answer to every one of the commandments. The word of the Lord. Please remain seated as we say the gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. Your word is truth, O Lord. Consecrate us in the truth. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, If your brother does something wrong, go and have it out with him alone between your two selves. If he listens to you, you have won back your brother. If he does not listen, take one or two others along with you. The evidence of two or three witnesses is required to sustain any charge. But if he refuses to listen to these, report it to the community. And if he refuses to listen to the community, treat him like a, a pagan or a tax collector. I tell you solemnly, whatever you bind on earth shall be considered bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be considered loosed in heaven. I tell you solemnly, once again, if two of you on earth agree to ask anything at all, it will be granted to you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three meet in my name, I shall be there with them. The Gospel of the Lord. I think the beginning of today's Gospel is actually quite tough because it's very much part of the real world. We do get into arguments and disputes. It's part of human nature. It was part of human nature to the people who were reading Matthew's words or listening to him for the first time. And so he was addressing this by picking a particular part of Jesus' teaching. What do we do? when we get caught in the arguments. What did the people do in Jesus' day or soon after when they were talking to Matthew? The chances are it too easily got out of hand and Jesus' message was something much gentler and yet still powerful. First of all, he makes it clear it's right to challenge someone if they do something that upsets us or upsets someone dear to us. Turning the other cheek, as we so often hear about, isn't simply about taking a back seat and saying, oh, well, never mind, I won't do anything about it. The challenge is something that we should do. But the question is, how do we go about it? Maybe today, the way we're encouraged to go about it, if somebody offends us, is go straight to make the biggest noise about it humiliate them publicly, get compensation. And that's really top of the list in so many cases, even when the offence was actually someone simply making a mistake, doing something by accident, something we could just as easily have done ourselves. And yet we imagine that we'll feel better when we've really put them down as much as we possibly could. And better still, got some money in our pockets out of it as well. 
Jesus has a very different approach. Yes, the challenge is needed because otherwise it grows into bitterness in our hearts. And if it does that, then love starts to die. And if we believe that God is love, then hopefully that thought shouldn't even bear thinking about. We can't let things turn to bitterness. But he says, go and have it out alone. Go and talk about it. It's not about saying we won't forgive. It's a part of forgiveness. We often can't forgive until we've had that means to come together again. We try to reconcile so that we're both healed. The hurt in us and the hurt in them. We try, but again, we're human beings and it often doesn't work. So Jesus takes it steps further as well. Bring a couple of others. Work together. Try to get healing and reconciliation. It's still quiet. The community is not involved. There's no public humiliation. But we try to seek peace. We try to seek harmony. We try to put right the wrong, but do it in a way that we're all healed. And then there are other steps. If someone still refuses to be corrected, Jesus does have it being reported to the community or even being treated like a tax collector or a pagan. But how did Jesus treat tax collectors and pagans? Well, he went and ate with them. He met with them. He made a difference and one of them followed Matthew himself, a tax collector. So there was never a point when it was done to gain advantage or to put somebody down. It was all about together bringing healing. And that has to be at the heart of the Christian message. Whatever's going on in our lives, wherever there's hurt, we need healing. And we pray that God be a part of that. So perhaps the message to us, is there a name that comes to mind for any of us where just now that name has a bad feeling inside and we really struggle to wish that person well? And if there is, that's human nature. But we invite God to meet us right there and to help us move forward in healing. Now let's profess our faith together in the God who has the power to heal all ills. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the worlds to come. Amen. Now in the current circumstances we leave out the formal bidding prayers. But we'll just pause for a moment for everyone to bring our own needs and petitions before God.
we ask our Blessed Lady to join us in prayer. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Heavenly Father, we place all our cares and concerns into your hands. Stay with us, Lord, on our journey. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. And by the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Now would you remain seated and pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who gave us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread. And giving you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. And now we remain seated as at the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching. We dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. the blood of Christ.
once again for communion if you would please wait to be guided by the stewards and we receive communion in silence and at arm's length For those joining us online, we share in a spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Like the deer that yearns for running streams, so my soul is yearning for you, my God. My soul is thirsting for God, the living God.
And now let's remain seated as we pray. Grant that you're faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Well, thank you for sharing in our Mass. Thank you to all those who've been involved, the stewards, the servers, the readers, ministers. If you have taken a newsletter, then do please take it with you. We're not collecting any of the papers in, but I would encourage people to go online and get the full version of it from there. The coronavirus page on the website has been updated again, as have the sacraments pages uh, for baptism and first communion. We're not announcing a great deal about First Communion at the moment, but we are moving on there and there will be an announcement, hopefully by the end of next week, but certainly the week after. So things are beginning to move there. We've had some guidelines. Uh, I'm hoping to have a Zoom meeting with the um, head teachers of the three primary schools during the week and we'll see what we can come up with together. Uh, as I'm sure you're aware, it will be very, very different than First Communions would normally have been. But uh, we keep, of course, the families and the children in our prayers. Now the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth now, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. <laughs>